Welcome back to another video. Now, I'm in a different car, don't worry, don't have kids all of a sudden. Since, since the last video, I had a kid. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I'm in my dad's car, basically my car's in for an MIT, but that's by the bike. Today's video, I'm sorry if I can't bring the same enthusiasm or energy, I'm trying my best. I had a night shift last night. I asked for the day off on Friday and they thought, okay, well, we'll put you on nights Thursday night, which is ideal. Anyway, enough about that, yeah. So I am today off to um, Kings Lake. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen, I've done a couple of videos on Kings Lake before, but back in March, for anyone that doesn't know, I've said this a thousand times, but some people might not know, um, back in March, I did my first ever proper carp fishing video. Now, when I say proper carp fishing video, I've caught carp before, but I've caught them on a feeder, the pole, I've caught them off the top on a waggler, those sorts of things. Um, but the first time I actually used leads, leg clips, bite alarms, things like that, um, was at Kings Lake and I actually went and break, broke my PB. Um, I'll leave the link up the top, guys, where you can go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. But I was absolutely buzzing. I caught, I think I caught four or five fish. Um, I had my PB and that was the first proper carp session I had. So I thought that was in March and the weather was pretty much exactly the same as it is today. Um, we are currently the 4th of November. It's still about, it's about 12, 13 degrees. The sun's out. We're not expecting any rain, although we had a lot of heavy rain last night, which is going to put a lot of oxygen in the water. Um, it might be a good thing. It might not. I don't know. But it's, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how I get on um, similar conditions, slightly different time of year. Oh, I'm bloody knackered now. It's a bit of a walk from the car park to the lake. <sighs> I put my thermals on as well. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. I just didn't want to be sat here in the cold. But um, eh. <laughs> when I get my breath back, I'll be able to talk to you a bit better. I might take my hat off, but I've got hat hair. That's the problem. Um, yeah, I think this is the only sunny day this week. So um, a lot of people have chose to come down here today. There's, there's a couple of, there's three people over there, two brothers and their dad. Um, there's a guy opposite them and there's a guy down to the left of me. So there's a few on here today. Um, I've just seen the uh, the brothers actually catch one as I was walking around, so that's good. But yeah, I'm going to get set up and I'm going to talk to you about today's video because today's video is not just a nostalgia of coming back to the lake where it started for, for me, the carp fishing for me, but also I'm going to be putting Parker Bates, two flavours up against each other, OG fish, OG fruit and nut. It's going to be a versus video and we're gonna see what's gonna come up on top. So today's video is gonna be a little bit of testing, a little bit of market research, if you will. I'm gonna put the Parker Bates OG fish up against the Parker Bates OG fruit and nut. We're gonna fish a bed of chops and 10 mils in each flavor, and we're gonna fish with a wafter, 14 mil dumbbell wafter over the top. And I'm gonna fish the same, the same rig. I'm gonna fish both on a, on a D rig, and they're both gonna be on a two and a half ounce pair lead weight, and they're just going to be in different directions in the lake. And we're just going to see what the fish prefer. So I'm going to start off with the OG fish. I'm going to get the OG fish chops. And all I'm going to do is put a small amount of that. I mean, it, it smells lovely, but a small amount of that in my pot. Then I'm going to get the 10 mils. I'm going to do exactly the same. 
again, smelling absolutely lovely. 10 mils are gonna go in. And that is ready to rock and roll. Same with the fruit and nut. We're gonna get the chops. Now that for me smells absolutely pucker. My favorite of the two is the fruit and nut, but it might change in today's video. And the 10 mils. Perfect. So here we are then, here's the OG fish. And that's got the chops and 10 mils in like you just saw. And I mean, the color is almost like a sort of, like a reddy purple, like a reddy kind of like brownie color, which is really nice. So I'm gonna fish, like I say, a bed of that. I'm gonna send out PVA bags, a bed of that with a 14 mil cork dust wafter over the top, one of these, and that is gonna sit on top of that. That is perfect. Beautiful presentation. And then we have the same over here, the fruit and nut. Like I say, this is my favorite flavor, um, but it could all change. I mean, you know, different times of year can bring out different flavor, different fish on different flavors and all about locations as well. There's the fruit and nut wafters. They just, they smell so good. But yeah, they are gonna sit over the top of that like that. But that is beautiful. Um, so there we have it, OG fish versus OG fruit and nut. And like I just said, you can draw your own conclusions from this. I mean, one might work better than the other, but that doesn't mean to say that it's gonna work every time better than the other. Um, it depends on time of year, weather conditions, um, the fish themselves, I guess, the venues, all different factors. But it's gonna be really interesting to see today. It is the 4th of November, by the way, I did check. <laughs> Bonfire night tomorrow night, <laughs> firework night tomorrow night. But yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, at this venue, which one takes off. Just quickly as well, what I could also do with these mixes is I could always add the liquid to them, the, the OG um, fish sauce and the OG fruit and nut sauce. I could liquid them and then dust them both with the OG fish magic dust and the fruit and nut magic dust. But I'll be honest with you, today, and I don't know why, I just don't want a sort of sticky mix. Um, I just want it quite dry and quite crumbly and that's what I've got and that's what I'm going to fish with. So I could use those products if I really want to enhance my bait, but I'm on a runs water today. There's nothing big out there. So it's just going to be interesting to see what we can catch. And there you have it. Both rods on the exact same lead system, the same lead, the same rig and the same bait, but in different flavors. Well, there we have it. I'm actually going to go with a mesh bag system guys, but there we go. Mesh bags with the rigs and wafters on. I'm going to get them both out at the same time. Well, obviously I can't cast two rods at once, but you know what I mean. Um, right hand rod's going to be fruit and nut. Just kick my rod over. <laughs> right hand rod's going to be fruit and nut, and I'm going to probably cast it. I mean, I haven't even thought about this yet. Right hand rod's going to go straight out towards the middle. Left hand rod, rod's going to go out left towards the middle. Both rods are out. I've got the 10 footers out today, which is always good fun. Absolutely beautiful. I love fishing at this lake. Like I said, you know, there's nothing big in here. I think the biggest in here is probably around 15 pounds. I did really well to catch a 12 pound fish out of here last time, but they're always growing. So who knows? There might be one pushing 20. That'd be nice. It's windy as well now. Sun's out, but it's nice weather. Wind's blowing right in my face. And yeah, it's gonna be awkward if I blank. <laughs> you know what? I still get nervous every time, even though I know there's nothing in it that's gonna break my PB. It's just the buzz of catching fish, isn't it? I love it. Yeah, so the video I was talking about when I came here back in March to fish my first time proper carp fishing um, was actually called uh, The Fish Chase episode number four. And it was called my Catching My PB Carp. Now the thing is with the fish chase, I wanted to touch on that quickly as well because I had this idea, if anybody that's new to the channel hasn't seen, at the start of the year, I set myself a goal to catch every species of freshwater fish in the UK. And I gave myself a year to do it. 
I soon realised that I just wasn't going to do it. Just working full time, I did not have enough time to be able to go out and go to venues and spend so much time trying to catch these different species of fish. And then I got hooked into my carp fishing and I've taken that up and that's sort of taken over. So I've got something in the pipeline for a species hunt. So don't worry about that. That will be it all explained next year. Um, but yeah, it's just mad to see how far my fishing's come. In just a space of like from March to November, I've got, I've gone from catching a 12 pound carp in March to October where I became a Parker Bates ambassador. I've got so much better equipment, so much better gear, like all my, my reels, my, my bite alarms, my rods, everything's so much better. And catching a tw my first 20 pound carp. So I've come quite far really and just onwards and upwards. And I filmed my first ever carp session video in that corner down there and there's a, you can't see them but there's a couple of lads in there now and they're into another fish that's two fish i've seen the catch down there now fair play to them they're young lads so i'm hoping that you know they're new to well i mean they're young anglers so they are relatively new to the to the fishing game which is good because that's where i started so fair play to them well, I'm glad I put my thermals on because now I'm set up and the rods are out. I'm sitting down and the wind's blowing in my face and even though the sun's out, it's quite chilly. I'm not a big fan of the cold. So, um, I don't know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a summer person, I think, but I love Christmas. I love all the, like, the coziness of winter, but I don't like being cold. First fish has been caught, and look at this for a beautiful fish. It's not big at all, but it was caught on the left, uh, sorry, the right hand rod, as you can see there in the bottom lip. And it was caught on the fruit and nut. So that's one nil to the fruit and nut. But yeah, this is a very small, a very small fish, but it's beautiful. Look at the colors on it. That is gonna grow to be a nice fish. There you go, fruit and nut, one nil up. Little fish, very little fish, but again, like I say, the colours on it are absolutely stunning. So there we go. Hold it a bit closer to the camera. Looks a bit bigger. <laughs> one nil fruit and nut. People do say, don't they, that in the summer months, the carp want a bit more sort of like a meaty, a meatier flavoured bait, hence the fish, um, which is actually squid octopus and chili or in the winter the carp wants something a bit more fruity or nutty you know the fruit and nut being peanut coconut and chocolate orange so yeah oh i thought i saw a big poo on the floor there <laughs> but it's just a leaf <laughs> oh this is why you, this is why you subscribe to this channel guys content like that or what, what i was getting at what i was going to say is i find it weird that different flavor baits uh, favoured for carp in different times of year because I like cheeseburgers and I think I'd eat a cheeseburger in August or December. I'm not fussy. I do like Twiglets at Christmas though and Quality Street. Oh and just a quick announcement on the giveaway from last week's video. Thank you to everybody that entered. Um, it's actually Friday for me today, right now as I'm filming this, so I haven't done the draw. Um, it ends at 6 p.m. tonight. I'm doing the draw live tomorrow um, for you guys. It was yesterday. So by the time this video is up, we'll know the winner. So I'll leave the winners on screen right now. So congratulations to you guys for winning. Thanks to everyone for entering, and there will definitely be more giveaways coming up soon. In fact, um, I've been given a couple of things to give away. So yeah, stay tuned, keep liking and subscribing, and thanks so much for your support, guys. Well, I've got fish number two on board, and it's come on the right hand rod again. The fruit and that, it's only been out for whew, 10 minutes, and it's gone again. We've got another one on board. I think it might be a little bit bigger, but it's still very small. But again, it's not all about the size of the fish. We're doing an experiment here to see which one the fish are on more. Let me get this one in, guys. Let me get this one in and I'll show you it. 
Well, here it is, fish number two. It's a common, and it's bigger than the last one, but still very small and very lively. Still wants to go. That's one thing I've not got better at so far is holding fish. There we go. Get my fingers out of the way. There he is. Got the shadows on him. But yeah, probably about four pound. Lovely. Two nil fruit and nut. So that's interesting. It's two nil to the fruit and nut. Like I say, it's on the right hand rod, which is out towards that sort of purple bush. Um, probably in line with that swim there. Not that one, that one, probably out. So it's about there somewhere. I'm not not wrapping up, I'm just chucking out with mesh bags. And then the left hand rod. Oh, there you go, look, fish just jumped there. It's not, it's not quite near my, it's, well, I mean, it's nowhere near my spot really. My spot's sort of over here. And then the left hand one is out towards, um, well, the guys in that swim over there. Oh, you can sort of see them now. You see the guy with the gray shorts on. So the left hand rod's sort of out more into the wards and middle of the lake, into the deeper part. It's all relatively the same depth all the way through, and there's no real sort of features, I, I don't think, in this lake. It's pretty much all gravel. But there you go. Fruit and nut 2-0. Well, I just reeled in the OG fish to find out why there's been absolutely no sniffs on it whatsoever, which I'm quite surprised about. Um, the bait was gone, so something's had it. I'm guessing it was little fish just nibbling away at it, and they've pulled it off. But yeah... It's strange, that OG fish, it will do a bite, I know it will. But yeah, that right hand rod is about to go. We've had a couple of doops. <laughs> Do <it. laughs> That's, that was my insane impression of my bite alarm. Doop. We've had a couple of doops. We just, oh, look, there we go. Well, this one really didn't want to give up, but that is another one on the fruit and nut. That is three fish now, or three nil to the fruit and nut. Let's hold them up for a picture. It's another mirror carp, and it is absolutely stunning. Now, I know people want to catch big carp, but when they look like this, it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the scales on it and the colors, the pattern of it. And it did put up a bit of a scrap for the size of it. it definitely didn't want to give up. Well, you just missed that, it wasn't recording, but my right hand rod just ripped off. But the thing is it, I think it, the fish spat the hook out really quickly. It got caught and it went doo -doo -doo -doo, and then literally as soon as I grabbed it, it, it was off. And I picked it up and obviously nothing was there, but that would have made it 4-0 to the OG fruit and nut. What is going on with the fish? I had my camera set up on my tripod, filming for ages. The second I took it off, the right arm rod goes off. 4-0 to the fruit and nut. We got a common on board. There she is. Another beautiful common. Happy days. There you go. OG fruit and that. Scores again. I don't know why my camera keeps doing that. But there it is, 5 nil. Another beautiful looking common. Look at the scales on it. This is why I like commons instead of mirrors because when they're fully scaled like this, they're just beautiful, look at them. Let's get the hook out. Let's hold them up for a photo. Now, if this was a football match, the OG fish fans would definitely be leaving early 
because the fruit and that are five nil up. And look how beautiful this common is. Really dark in color, scale perfect. Well, just as I'm putting that fish back, I actually had a beep on the OG fish rod. I really want that one to go. But the clocks have changed now, so it starts to get dark pretty quick. I'm probably gonna give it another hour or so, and then uh, we'll call it a day, but it's five nil to the fruit and nut. Well, would you believe this? It is now six nil to the OG fruit and nut. And it's an absolute scaly, It's an absolute scaly banger. Look at it. What a fish. So not only is it six new up, I've actually lost two fish on it as well. That's crazy. So I've had two dis of I'm six new up on the the OG fruit and nut is six new up and it's had two goals ruled out on VAR. Honestly, that that um OG fish, I do not know what to do with that i don't know why it's not producing um but it's definitely changed my idea and my theories i've always said that if a hungry carp swims past bait it will take it no matter what it is i'm, I'm, I'm i mean i'm quickly learning that that's not the case because for whatever reason this og fruit and nut is really kicking off today doesn't mean that the og fish is a bad product at all or a bad bait at all but at this specific time of the year um, on this certain water with these carp obviously the fruit and nut is the favorable one now it, Like I said doesn't mean that the OG fish is a bad bait. I've seen absolute bangers caught on it But maybe it's more of a summer bait It's things like this that you you learn and you pick up and I wouldn't have known without doing this video and and testing these baits in the way that I did or the, the way that I have if ever I come down here again um, or, or even you know, I might find that the fruit and nuts better in the winter and then next summer maybe the OG fish will come into its own. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's definitely something that, that I can take on board and uh, use. It's, it's things like this you have to remember, you know. Even things like little things like when it's windy, do the fish bite more? When it's sunny, do the fish bite more? When it's overcast, do they bite more? There's so many different little factors and things that can go into getting a bite. And uh, yeah, today the fruit and nut is winning. The rod's off the stand again. And this time it has done my rig. Oh, I was fishing tight to those tree stumps on the right hand side. And it's gone straight round the tree stump and it's snapped me. It's done me. There we go. I'm gonna bring the fruit and nut rod in now. I'm really gonna try and focus about half an hour. I've got about half an hour left. I'm gonna see if I can focus on this OG fish and try and get one on this OG fish. So I've put the OG fish over where I've been fishing the fruit and nut chops and I've just had a nibble although I feel like is this cheating because I'm using the OG fish wafter over the fruit and nut chops it might be cheating but I'm still determined to catch one on this OG fish Ah, oh, the last three runs I've had, I've lost all three fish. What's going on? How many have you lost? <laughs> it's non three. Non-stop, wasn't that? Yeah, one went right round that tree stump. Oh, right. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and then the other two, I think they were just little ones. By the time I got there and lifted it up, the hook just pulled, so... I was talking to Tony there for a few minutes. I know. I said, I can't keep two bobs in the water. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> Well, after losing those three fish, the bailiff came over to me and he goes, how many have you lost? I said, oh, yeah, I know, don't, tell, don't talk about it. He goes, oh, I was talking to some guy down there. He said, he kept looking over and he said, you couldn't keep two rods in the water. But it was the, it was the fruit and nut one kept going off all the time. Um, I, I think one of them was, was one of them on the fish? I think one of them was on the fish. I think the last one was on the fish. Oh, yeah, I just... 
I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 I was going to say it's, it's been one of those days, but it hasn't. It's been a good day. It's been, it's been one of those days for the last half an hour, the last three fish. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, probably going to pack away. And there we go guys, that is the end of the session, the end of the day and the end of the video. This is a head to head, I'm going to make it a new series. There's definitely more that I want to do. I want to delve into the pop-ups, the fruit and nut and obviously the fish pop-ups as well. And there's some new boilies coming out as well. So I'd love to put them against each other and see. It's just a, compar it's a comparison basically. Look, it doesn't mean any of these are bad baits if one catches and one doesn't. It's just interesting to see what the fish like. Like I say, it could be down to the time of year. It could be down to the venue. It could be down to the fish themselves. It could be down to anything really. But yeah, we've all seen big fish come out on both flavors. So it's just, it, it's interesting. It really is interesting to see, see what happens there with that. So thanks for watching. Please like, honestly, I've, I'm gonna go home now. I've had like two hours sleep. I'm gonna go home now, have a roast dinner, and then I'm just going to crash. I've got work. I've got to be up again at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Like I said, I've had two hours sleep, so I need to just crash, have a couple of beers. But look, I'm bringing this content, these videos for you guys, because I know you want to see them. I enjoy making them as well. But yeah, I'm just absolutely knackered. So please, please, please give me some love and support. Like the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And well done to the winners. And I'll see you next Sunday at five. Peace.